let me tell you how in real life practice we really do use this let's say i'm a cardiologist or a cardiac surgeon and i have a patient let's say I had a cabbage just came back from cabbage or whatever the problem is assuming i know the patient because to manage this you should be knowing the patient what's the problem the diagnosis so you know what's the uh, clinic the history right you have examined physical exam you have examined the patient you have looked at the chest x-ray labs uh, you have the echo findings if it's available you have the INOs but this is how they come okay what's the LVEDP and what's the cardiac index as we said, LVEDP, you can get it from the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. But again, we repeat it in real practice. Sometimes they don't like to keep wedging the patients to get this, or they do it once a day. And sometimes they give a rough estimate from the diastolic value of the pulmonary artery pressure. Change the color here. To give a rough estimate of the LVEDP, again, you may not find somebody may disagree with this but this is what they do they do a wedge pressure once and see if it's close to the diastolic pressure and they use it to guide them to LVEDP <clears throat> so they check this and check this number okay if this number I'll give you clinical difference if this number is low and this number is low so there you have a low filling pressure or LVE diastolic pressure or even similar to the preload you can say and low cardiac output that means to them okay patient looks like needs volume so they go ahead and give the patient IV fluid bolus of normal saline of 250 or 500 or a liter depends on other factors as we just said and then reassess these numbers still need more fluid they give more fluids up to a certain points let's have another scenario they come and say okay no we have a high LVEDP and then a low cardiac index that means the patient looks like in congestive heart failure on the left side right and probably the patient may need diuresis let's say the patient with these findings is hypotensive and you cannot give fluids because already he's in pulmonary edema for example and it's already the LV EDP is high then you may think starting okay then patient may need vasopressors or enotropes and then reassess the number and then go up and down on these based on these numbers this is where really this one can be very helpful let's say despite optimizing everything and despite vasopressin and tropes the cardiac index continue to decrease that's when you start thinking does the patient need an LVAD when I say LVAD don't think about the long-term LVAD we talk about the short terms that those that can stay only for a few days or intraortic balloon pump if the right indication is there then you may need to do that right and that's how they use the the lift ventricle filling pressure in diastolic pressure and cardiac index these are the main one of course if you have somebody with severe pulmonary hypertension they are on flow land for example to <coughs> dilate their pulmonary vasculature and reduce pulmonary pressure you look into that as well so cardiac index guide us because you want to maintain adequate cardiac output and then how to increase cardiac output or index or maintain it you look at this number by doing the wedge pressure or as we said this is kind of hack of the record see if it's correlated the wedge pressure with the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure and then you can use it as a guide I think 
that should be enough for us talking about swans and numbers as an internal medicine residence or intern or even a hospitalist all these issues will be managed mainly by cardiologists cardiac surgeons or intensivists so we don't have much say and that's the reality you know, we not say but and i think that's better because they have far better experience and i'm talking in simple terms because some other patients they have some mitral disease valve disease for example tricuspid valve diseases the RV infarction is a separate things where you need to give fluids, this and that. And I have to say that in RV infarction, we most of the case we don't need swan unless you decide to put a, a right-sided impella, which is an LVAD, uh, to get better um, readings.